Hey there, this is going to be Super Resolution GAN in 10 minutes. Alright, so Super Resolution is taking a low resolution, often blurry image, and upscaling it into a perceptually nicer image. And SR GAN, based on the last three letters, is a derivative of generative adversarial networks, which I covered in a previous video, so I recommend you go watch that before you watch this. Alright, so let's get into it. The authors state their goal here, which is how do we recover finer texture details when we super resolve at large upscaling factors. So as you can see in this figure, when you take a blurry image and you try to upscale it at a high resolution, the existing methods such as bicubic interpolation, which is essentially pixel averaging, doesn't really cut it. It creates a really blurry image. And so there have been previous works on this. So some of these will use super resolution convolutional neural networks. So, you know, you'll pass in a low resolution image in the input and it will output a high resolution image. And then these works will often also use mean squared error. And so what mean squared error is, is it's just the difference between two things and the authors note that this kind of works well with another metric used in images called peak signal to noise ratio but this kind of has a problem which is that images with a high peak signal to noise ratio such as um, this image right here this image has a peak signal to noise ratio of about 23.5 this image is clearly less visually appealing than this image and this image has a lower peak signal to noise ratio so what that tells us is to make a good image what you often need is a peak signal to noise ratio, but something else. And so what the authors propose is super resolution can. And so they use a deep residual network in their parts of their GAN, and then they don't use mean squared error. Alrighty, so now what this figure is telling us is that previous, previous works that are using mean squared error are going to create super resolutions that are far away from the natural image manifold. So they represent a mean squared error solution in here. And the natural image manifold is something like this. And so the mean squared error isn't really able to place itself in this natural image manifold. And the reason is because mean squared error is often creates a pixel wise averaging of possible solutions. So to kind of illustrate it and I think the authors chose a good image to use in this figure which is I guess some sort of the the skin of this animal here so you can see it has a lot of fine grain detail so let's say it looks something like this that's my best attempt to draw that and so that's version one and let's say some identical patch appears you know 200 more times in someplace else but it's slightly slightly different so instead of this little piece being right there it's slightly below and you get the point so these are really really similar but also not really the same so if you're a network and you're trying to learn a representation for this detail this pattern what you're going to end up learning if you use mean squared error it's just an average. So you're just going to learn an average. And it's just going to be blurry. Something like this, right? Because at some point, these things will be in every possible position. And so it's not going to learn this detail, right? It's just going to learn a mean. Now what the GAN-based solution does is it places it in the natural image manifold by focusing on perceptual similarity. And so you can see that the GAN is, can get into the natural image manifold, making it more pleasing. All right, so we talked about these. So yeah, so this is gonna be the structure of the GAN. So in the middles here, they have the residual network. The discriminator also has these blocks. And then the input is going to be a low resolution image. And the low resolution is important because let's say you wanted, you have an image and you want to upscale it, right? To a more beautiful image. So you know, to be accurate, it would have to be something like this. So you want to turn that into that. Well, if you only have these types of images in this resolution, let's just say, you know, 224 by 224, and you want to upscale it four times, 
how are you going to get these images? Well, you can't. So the solution is to go in the opposite direction and make these one-fourth size images. And so this is going to be the low resolution. This is going to be the high resolution. And then once a network can make a another one of these, we're going to call that the super resolution. So, yep, so we're going to start with a low resolution here. And it's going to make a forward pass through the generator. Then we're going to get a super resolved thing. And to kind of reiterate that, the difference between the super resolved and the high resolution, or SR versus HR, is that HR is the ground truth that's coming from the data set. And the super res resolution image is what's the forward pass through the generator. All right, so then the super resolution image is going to come all the way here. And then we're going to take that original high resolution image before downsampling and we're going to bring it here. And then these are going to both go through. And then it's going to make a decision. And as we talked about in our game video, the competitive process between the generator and the discriminator is going to train both models and it's eventually going to make a really, really good generator. And it's going to make a generator that can place these images in the natural image manifold. And so the natural image manifold is kind of an analogous concept to, you know, distributions. As we talked about in our last video, the GAN, if this black line is the true data set distribution, the generator will try to approximate this. Oops. Okay. So now we're going to talk about the perceptual class. So they define their loss function as a content loss plus a weighted sum of a content loss and an adversarial loss. So the content loss, instead of using mean squared error, is they're going to take a VGG network. And then after the activation of a specific layer, they're going to take that, and then they're going to compute the difference, the Euclidean distance. So if you have this network, VGG, they're going to pass the super resolved image through it, and then they're going to pass the high resolution image through it, and so that's going to make something, that's going to make something. And then they're going to take these two. They're going to calculate the Euclidean distance between these two. All right. Then the adversarial loss is just the GAN loss. All right, so next they're going to investigate their more in-depth, their premise of this perceptual loss. And so they have set 5 here and set 14, which are data sets. And so they use their perceptual loss strategy on a, on a ResNet and then a GAN. Um, and, so, and so they have this thing. So we have peak pseudo noise ratio, structural similarity. And so these are both just standard measures of the fidelity of an image. And then they have this mean opinion score rating. And what they did is they essentially showed these images to humans to quantify how appealing these images were or images are. And so you can see that the VGG, or perceptual loss, outperforms on mean opinion score, which again, so mean opinion score measures visual appealingness, if that's a word, visual appealingness. And so you can see that the, the perceptual loss does much better on this mean opinion score. Same thing with the SR GAN. And then something interesting is that they also test two different types of VGG losses. So they're going to test a loss from the VGG network of a lower level, lower level features. And then this 54 one is going to be a higher level feature. So it's going to be kind of more abstract, more perceptual. So that's going to outperform the lower level, lower level, that's a tongue twister, perceptual loss, and then the mean squared error loss. And so this is just mean opinion scores. So you can see higher mean opinion scores here and then these are all the networks and so you can see the original the best possible quality image the high resolution image is here the GAN SR GAN is getting really close there then everything else is kind of up here and so the SR GAN with this perceptual loss is able to get really close um, according to humans according to a visual more visually pleasing image so I really like this figure um, and so we have it 
our image here. And then this red square is going to correspond here, the orange square there, the yellow and green square. And so these are all kind of at different places and sizes and level of detail. And so we'll see that the the mean squared error is going to make a really blurry image. This is a resonance. So if we're comparing our GANs here, so we have our GAN here, here, and here. So our mean squared error is going to make a more blurry image. This has more detail. And this has way more detail. Almost really similar to this. And so if you remember how I talked about earlier about this pixel averaging problem, you can really see that clearly here. So even in the eyes, it's able to reconstruct these slight dark lines while, you know, the mean squared error kind of blurs this eye. Same with the lower level VGT22. You can see it really makes these clearer lines that you see on the higher resolution image. So yeah, qualitatively, this SRGAN is really good. And then the last thing, it's the same thing here. So mean opinion score, it excels at that. And it gets really close actually to the high resolution images. And the high resolution image is essentially the perfect score you can get. So, so that was super resolution gain in 10 minutes. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one.